Hello, this is Jim Keener, Certified College Planning Specialist. It's my privilege to introduce you to ePrep, an SAT preparation course that contains everything you need to quickly improve your skills and confidence in your preparation for the SAT. Each course features engaging, expert, and personalized instruction available to you 24-7 through on-demand videos and interactive lessons. We have specific test date courses, which focus on a particular date with a special price. We also have annual passes that are perfect for students considering taking the SAT more than once throughout the year. What we're going to do here now for the next seven minutes is to go through three samples of video instruction, starting with math, moving to critical reading, and writing. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do in offering it to you. Thank you. And by the way, we offer the largest discount on ePrep courses on the internet, 50% off all retail prices. After you watch the seven minute video, please click on the link below and you can go to our SAT page that has all the details. Thank you very much. This is question six. Let's take our time and do this one together. Based on the figure above, which you can see right here, which of the following statements must be true? Okay. So let's take a close look at this figure. Uh, and what I just want to point out real quick is it says figure not drawn to scale. Okay. So what that means is that even though these two lines here look parallel, don't assume that they are parallel because the figure is not drawn to scale. They did tell us that they were parallel. So let's forget that idea. Okay. Uh, what I focus on right now is this. I see what looks like a triangle in here. Okay. I'm just going to highlight that for you right here. This is the triangle that I'm looking at. Right? Now, let me, let me just do a little side lesson here. If you have a convex polygon, okay, it's a polygon with no sort of indentations, uh, something like this okay, would not be a convex polygon, this one here. So let's get rid of that. This is a convex polygon. And if you extend the sides of a convex polygon and you create exterior angles, you do it the same direction. You create this pinwheel-looking thing. All right. All of these exterior angles will add up to 360. Okay. As long as it's a po convex polygon, doesn't matter how many sides. Does not need to be regular. All of the exterior angles of a convex polygon always add up to 360. All right. And a triangle is a convex polygon. So if you extend the sides of a triangle, these angles here will also add up to 360. So when I see this triangle and I see sort of the angles around the triangle, I start to think of that. And I say, all right, you know what? If I extend this side right here, I can create this exterior angle. And if I extend this side here, I create this exterior angle. And then if I extend this side here, A and B together form this exterior angle. So I know that A plus B plus C, plus D, those are the exterior angles of this triangle, which is convex, and they have to add up to 360. If I look down here and I see A plus B plus C plus D equals 360, that's the way I would do this one. I would pick A from there and move on. So if you didn't get that one right, just don't worry about it. Just keep practicing, keep watching the videos, eventually you'll get there. This is question four. Let's take our time and do it together. His fixation on blank thoughts made Herman an abnormally gloomy person with an unhealthy state of mind. Okay? Now, you know, try to get an understanding of what's going on. There's somebody named Herman, and he has a fixation on some kind of thoughts. And that fixation makes him an abnormally gloomy person with an unhealthy state of mind. What we're going to do on this one is we're going to just quickly go through the answer choices and we're going to define them very quickly, okay? The word shallow means not profound or superficial. The word morbid means unwholesomely gloomy, okay? So this one already sounds great to me, okay? See the word gloomy there? I know that this word means unwholesomely gloomy. I already like B a lot, but let's quickly go through the rest. Unorthodox means breaking with convention or tradition, 
Lackadaisical means lazy or listless, and candid means frank, sincere, or honest. Okay? So for me, I mean, if you have a strong vocabulary and you know that morbid means un unwholesomely gloomy, you just pick B and you move on. Okay? So the thing I want to stress right now is that, you know, in the sentence completion section, vocabulary is 90% of it. If you have a strong vocabulary, or what the college board says, uh, what is it, a large and varied vocabulary, this section is going to be pretty easy for you. How do you get a large and varied vocabulary? You read, you look up the words you don't know, you, you jot them down, uh, you write down their definition, and you memorize them. Spend some time with it. It's going to help you on the SAT, and it's going to help you in college and life beyond. This is question three. Let's take our time and do it together. Some college students are forced into making a choice between a dormitory room or an off-campus apartment. Okay? Uh, let me, instead of just reading this thing again, show you what you need to think about. Okay? If I take my child to an ice cream parlor and I offer my child an ice cream and I say, okay, I will give you a choice. Okay? This is an abbreviation for between, okay? If I say to my child, I will give you a choice between V for vanilla and C for chocolate, okay? I'll give you a choice between vanilla and chocolate. You don't give a choice between vanilla or chocolate. That's not right. You can say to the child, oh, you know, you can have vanilla or chocolate, but once you say you're giving a choice or choose between, once you use between, it's going to be choose between those two flavors. Choose between vanilla and chocolate. Okay? So I'm definitely looking for one that has an and, not an or. Okay? So they don't make a choice between a dormitory room or an off-campus apartment. It's a choice between a dormitory room and an off-campus apartment, okay? So if you didn't know that, don't worry about it. You know it now. Memorize it. It will serve you well on the SATs, okay? So I'm going to get rid of A pretty quickly. Um, the B has more in it, so I'm going to get rid of that one pretty quickly. I'm trying to save myself as much reading time as I can. I look at C. It has N. I look at D. It has or, so I'm going to get rid of D. And I look at the last one between dormitories and apartments. Okay, so that one has uh, and, right? So I'm going to choose between C and E now. Some college students are forced to choose between a dormitory room and an off-campus apartment. I like C a lot. I'd be inclined to pick this one and move on, but let's quickly take a look at E because we're not in a rush right now. Some college students are forced between, they're forced between dormitories and apartments to choose while on campus. Unbelievably awkward, certainly not better than C. Cross it out, pick C with confidence, and move on. Okay? So if you didn't didn't know that construction, don't worry about it. I want to keep teaching you these things, okay? Because I think not only will they help you increase your SAT score, I think in the long run they will make you a better writer. So keep it up, keep practicing, eventually you'll get there. Okay, now click on the link below so you can find out additional information about the SAT ePrep course and special pricing for you. Thank you.